This place is a wildlife photographer's dream. All right, all right, all right. What a journey I'm about to tell you. Let's start with the why. The why is very simple. I've chartered two ships in Galapagos for 2025 to run photography workshops there. And I needed to scout. Going to Galapagos is a unique experience in itself. It's the stuff that dreams are made of, if you're a wildlife photographer. Because the wildlife photography that is so freaking good and it's so freaking accessible. This tour that I was on though was a, a tour for normal people for non-photographers. And the video here is actually the video that was supposed to have gone out last week. The reason it didn't go out last week is because the story that I filmed in Galapagos, I didn't love it. When I was watching the edited video and feeling like this doesn't do Galapagos justice. There's so much wealth to the Galapagos Islands. And the video I had made was so rushed being told by the leader, the naturalist guy, Jonas, hurry up, Jonas, hurry up. We're leaving, we're leaving, we're leaving. So I didn't have time to film properly. I didn't have time to shoot properly. I felt very rushed. But even having felt very rushed, the portfolio I'm back with from Galapagos is amazing. I got some incredible shots that I'm incredibly proud of. And we're gonna look at those shots today. We're gonna talk about the journey. We're gonna see some of the B-roll that I shot in Galapagos. And we're gonna make it, I think, more real as it was the experience. We're starting with land, iguana. Lots of other animals were, of course, on land, but I've decided only to include one land animal and that's the gorgeous, gorgeous iguana. Jurassic Park stuff. The iguana is also the first animal that I photographed getting off the Zodiac in Galapagos. I managed within three minutes to not only photograph an iguana, but also a pelican. First iguana that I photographed that very first encounter. I don't think that's the best shot. I got some other shots that I find to be much more appealing. For example, this one where the background is completely blown into smithereens. I love how he is so isolated and I love the detail in the iguana itself. Even look at this huge cut. It looks like someone took a big bite out of his face. Or this one of the iguana sitting amongst the grass and the flowers. I've got approximately, I think, seven, eight hundred <laughs> images of iguanas uh, in different shapes, forms, colors. Oh, I forgot to mention the tortoises. Yeah, I got a shot of a tortoise. Tortoises. Tortoises. Like, who would ever come up with a word that you can't pronounce? Tortoises. Tortoises. Anyway, problem was I was uh, sick, and after that, I ran to the bathroom. Food poisoning, by the way. Moving straight into the sky. Let's start with the most exciting one, the blue-footed booby. The blue-footed booby is kind of like, it's kind of like the logo of Galapagos. And I was quite upset because I didn't think actually that I got any good images of the blue-footed boobies. But it turns out that I did. I shot this particular blue-footed booby landing in the grass and walking around on the first day. I thought those images didn't turn out to be anything, but I actually really enjoy these shots. And got another shot here of a blue-footed booby standing on a cliffside. Most of these shots are taken at 400 mm f2.8 to f5.6, something like that. And basically me using the same lens over and over. I don't think anyone should bring a longer lens than 400 mm uh, for Galapagos, unless you're into biff birching flight photography because everything else even the 400 sometimes is too long that coupled with 100 to 400 or 70 to 200 perfection in terms of setup i think the next bird that i photographed on my second day was the frigate bird the frigate birds when they fly they are so freaking exciting they look like something taken out of the jurassic park kind of like the shape they look like flying small dinosaurs look at like these flying images here Look at the angles, the joints, I guess, in their wings or whatever it is. For me, they, they, they really spell out. And you can see the males, they have this huge red kind of bladders under their beaks. And they use this to basically puff them up 
and that's the how they call and make themselves pretty for the ladies and the ladies are the more boring looking ones and i got some really nice shots of that like this one i don't love the fact that it's from behind but it's what it is but the fact that it's a male being successful in courting a lady freaking love it i think that's a nice shot for the archive and i'm looking forward to going back and hopefully i can get the same type of shot but from the reverse because i would love to have been on the other side of that bird but there wasn't the opportunity for that another really exciting animal is the pelican they're so ugly but yet so beautiful at the same time i can't really describe it the trouble though i don't really have many shots of the pelicans that i love like this is the shot from the first day after that iguana story I told you earlier. Kind of half hidden by a cliff, I like that. I like the hidden nature and the fact that you feel like you're kind of like peeping around the corner and one. And I got a few of them standing quite regally on rocks overlooking the water. But none of those are really the stuff dreams are made of. But after that, I photographed the flamingos. Guys, we got freaking pink flamingos. Now that was a true and real experience. These flamingos were so freaking pink. I think that all my images look overcooked, but they're not, the saturation is normal. This is what the birds actually looks like. The flamingos, this alien-like creature, this pinkness standing in the murky, greenish, brownish water with reflections from the background, isolated subject. Jesus Christ, I enjoyed shooting that. It was so much fun. And I had 10 minutes and then the naturalist guy told me to move on. Which again, is not gonna happen on my tour when we go to Galapagos because the naturalist guide is gonna be on the photographer side and not on the general group tourist kind of side. I was so freaking excited photographing the flamingos because I don't know, it's just something about the contrast. It kind of like the perfect color contrast between these pinks and the greens in the background, kind of like, how incredibly alien-like they feel especially look at this image here with the neck how many turns are there or bends are there on this freaking neck flamingos equals fun to shoot i shot the penguin this is the first time i see a penguin and i was very underwhelmed i think you need to see a large colony to be really be wowed by penguins these penguins were just kind of like standing around on rocks shitting and being happy like look at this one i caught on the seaside like this is a happy penguin like look at his smile like this guy is so fat happy lying his own shit and content it's gorgeous but there was no challenge in the photography other than trying to hold a 400 millimeter or whatever i shot this at um stable from a zodiac because that's a bit of a challenge but generally speaking i didn't love shooting the penguins as a photographer that was not super exciting i was so lucky to have seen and photographed the galapagos hawk but the downside was that for the 10 minutes or so that i had to photograph the hawk it did absolutely nothing except sit there and stare out at sea so it's kind of like bird in tree shot and i'm not excited about the background it kind of like blends in and disappears i'm really excited for another chance at photographing the hawk but this journey did not provide that opportunity another bird though that i absolutely love to shoot was the yellow crowned night heron love this one it just it's so alien like and i love the fact that it's a dark bird with lots of contrast in the head standing on a homogenous lava based rock and really stands out for me this is one of my more favorite shots of the, the, the wildlife on the islands other than that then we have uh, some shots of the red billed tropic bird these are nice with these beautiful long feathers sticking out the rear end flying so fast and then we come to my all-time favorite one of the smallest creatures the galapagos flycatcher I only saw it for a few minutes. I only got one shot that I really like, but it's this one. And it's so environmental, the portrait in, in its nature. You can really see the, the entire like almost dead landscape of fresh lava. This lava was no more than about a hundred years or so. And you can see in the background that trees are starting to form and come up and life is starting to come back to this otherwise arid, dead lava place. And 
I love that. You can see that the bird is fighting or even thriving, I don't know, for survival in an, in an arid landscape where there's almost no water, there's almost no insects. But slowly but surely, life is returning to this environment and the bird is thriving. And that's what this environmental portrait tells me. And this is why I love this so much. I think this here is one of my favorite bird shots. Finally, uh, let's have a talk about the underwater stuff. I did a lot of snorkeling. I did four or five snorkel tours and it was freaking amazing. I actually thought before that, that I would cut that out of a photography program, but nah, nah. That's one of the most amazing experiences I had on Galapagos. I got a chance to swim with a sea lion. He was no more than half a meter from me. Oh my God, what a beautiful creature. Look at his eyes. I got a chance to chase a reef shark because obviously he was much faster than I was. And I was paddling with my flippers as fast as I could just to get these shots. I'm a total amateur with snorkeling and underwater photography, but I freaking loved it. And I saw schools after schools after schools of fish. The snorkeling experiences in Galapagos are out of this world. They are so freaking good and the water is so warm and delicious. This was um, a moment, an experience that I'm going to remember for my life. That's how good this was. These little t t tiny videos and these shots, this doesn't do it justice at all. This journey on Galapagos, just the freaking wildlife, the proximity to wildlife, the experience of seeing species endemic to only this place. And of course, so far, we've only mentioned the wildlife. What about the landscapes? The landscapes, paradise beach after paradise beach, beautiful red, magenta, pink sunsets, golden sunrises. There's so much landscape photography to do. I did a tremendous amount of landscape photography from the ship as the ship was moving. There was like opportunity after opportunity to do really minimalist scenes. I'm saving these images for next week's video because there's so much to tell. This, the wildlife, oof, Jesus, I got scared as a cat outside the window. You see, scared by a cat. And next week, yeah, we're gonna do the landscapes, uh, which is gonna be a fun video. And after that, uh, I'll be in Svalbard. I'm flying to Svalbard now in 12 days. So literally it's around the corner in Svalbard. An eight night expedition awaits. And after Svalbard, I go back to Ecuador for two weeks and then back to Svalbard again for another expedition. That one with Thomas Heaton and Simon Dantremont. So yeah, the next six weeks, seven weeks, uh, is packed, jam packed with excitement. And after that, back to Ecuador for a few weeks and then the Alps, the summer in the Alps arrives. Anyway, guys, I loved sharing this experience with you and I hope you had a great time watching these images and this little narration of what Galapagos can be like. And thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next week.